2019 is almost over. It is time for the year-end list, the big one, the, the best albums of 2019. I did try putting on a tie, but um, it didn't look too good. I wanted to dress up for the occasion, but unfortunately, um, you, you just get a black shirt. Just wanted to mention my Patreon before I start this list. Obviously, these lists are quite time-consuming. They, um, you know, I work, I, I'd like to think I work quite hard on my channel and stuff. So if you're interested in just donating a little bit of money, uh, that'd be great. But you don't feel like you have to. Just thought I'd mention it in case you're uh, not aware of it. And now for the list. 50 albums of the year that I think are absolutely damn good. I have, you know, done the honourable mentions, the EPs and the songs of the year, so if you want to check those out, make sure you do, um, as you may be wondering if a few albums have been omitted off this list, of course they may actually be in the honourable mentions list I did a few days back. Now it is time for the goddamn list. At number 50, we have The Comet Is Coming with their very spacey new jazz album. I think this is some really goddamn good jazz that you should be listening to in 2019. It grew off me just a little bit, but it's still worthy of this, uh, of, of, of being on this list. I didn't hear a great deal of country music in 2019, but the debut album from Alice Wallace is by far the most impressive one I heard. Um, Into the Blue is a really, really strong country release. If you're interested in that genre, then check this out. It would not be a year-end list without Thugger. Young Thug with so much fun it is exactly what it says in the title. Sure, you could cut a few tracks out, I think, for sure but um, it's Young Thug and he's just doing what he's doing and he's one of the best at it. Little Sims with Grey Area at 47, like with The Comet Is Coming, this did grow off me quite a little bit, but I think this is easily the best UK rap album I've heard in 2019. And uh, Little Sims is, is onto something here. I think she's just gonna keep getting better and better from here. At 46 though, I believe we have the best album from a UK rapper in 2019. However, she's uh, going into spoken word with this one. Uh, this is Kate Tempest with the books, a book of traps and lessons. I don't think this is her best album, but my God is her lyricism just beyond uh, brilliant like i i cannot praise her enough for her amazing lyrics that she presents on this album maybe a best written album so far but i think musically she has done better in the past so please listen to kate tempest she's one of my favorite artists around right now she deserves your listen at number 45 we've got west coast with a really good shoegaze release here a bit more of a rockier shoegaze album which is usually more down my uh down my alley and then at the number 44 spot we have default genders with main pop girl 2019 a uh, really cool breakbeat drum and bass album, which is very unique for the genre. I think this is uh, a really cool listen. Gum Takes Tooth at number 43, a really cool blend of like synth work and uh, electronics and rock music and like industrial type stuff. It's really, really cool. And then at number 42, uh, he dropped a mammoth of an album last year and somehow he dropped another one this year, even though the last year's album was like almost two hours long. It's Nino de Elche with Colombiana. My favorite Sheena Ringo album to date Sandakushi. Not really a popular opinion, I know, but I do like this more than the uh, Cup of Tea album that she has that everyone knows. Uh, she's just a, such a good art pop uh, musician. She's just throwing in all the theatrics on this album. It's pretty mad. It's great. The sort of official, official version of Jai Paul's 2013 album at number 40. Um, sure, it would be way higher on the list if this was a finished product. I mean, some of these songs could have been incredible if they were finished, but even as they stand, they are so damn good. Uh, I couldn't include, I couldn't exclude it off the list. Uh, Jai Paul is really, really, really good artist. I'd like to see more from him in the future. At 39, I've got one of the best African releases I heard in 2019 from BCUC with The Healing. This album has Saul Williams and Femi Kuti on it, so that should be enough to sell it to you guys. At number 38, the greatest man to ever live, Randy Newman, the objectively best man to ever live, Randy Newman, with his soundtrack for the Marriage Story film, which is one of the better films I've seen in 2019, and the score that he did for it here, is wonderful, it perfectly matches the film. It's a great release. TRST, Trust with The Destroyer Volume 1, 
uh, proving that the sequel is never as good as the original because volume 2 didn't really do much for me at all but volume 1 is packed with so many 80s synth heavy jams that um, are very gothic and dark that I just cannot say no to. Some great Mande music at number 36 with Basuku, Kiyate and Nagoni Ba. This is just some really, really summery type of African music and it's a genre that I've just delved into recently that I absolutely love and this is uh, a great example of that genre. 35, one of the wildest albums I've heard all year from Duke. Uh, d uh, combining footwork and Singeli music, it is just an absolute chaotic album with the wildest vocals. Uh, one of the most unique experiences I've had in 2019. It's not for everyone, I think you could easily hate this, but I would definitely check it out just for the uniqueness of it. It's so damn good. The Origin of My Depression at number 34, one of the most harrowing and chilling albums of the year. Again, not going to be for everyone, but I think you should definitely listen to it just for the experience alone it is terrifying. It's a terrifying listen. And Yubo is an incredibly talented artist. And uh, yeah, this is a great album. On the opposite end of the scale though, we have Ana Frango Electrico um, at 33, a really cool album that combines so many different styles of pop, MPB, all those kinds of things. It's a really, really good listen coming from Brazil. So Baby Girl at 32 with Crush On Me, some really cool and off kilter strange pop songs, but some really goddamn catchy ones too, like Pink Light and Cheerleader. Uh, yeah, it's a baby girl's one to watch for the future. Angelique Kidjo with her Celia Cruz covers album at number 31. Um, it's combining elements of like samba music, a bit of jazz, and uh, you know, her take on it coming from Africa as well, just like she did in 2018 with the Talking Heads cover album. Once again, she's proving that she can take a sound and make it completely her own and make it sound great in the process. One of the best indie pop releases I've heard all year as well with uh, Jay Som at number 30, Anna Ko. Really done a 180 on Jay Som. I really like this release. I didn't like much of her previous stuff but I'm excited to see where she goes from here. Anna Meredith with Fibs at number 29. Um, just some really creative electronic music that is so expansive and adventurous. It's such an adventurous listen, this one. Um, I think Anna Meredith is doing some really cool stuff with electronic music and uh, she deserves much more attention than she's getting. Dorian Electra's breakout release with Flamboyant. It's exactly that, it is completely flamboyant. It's in your face unapologetic and it's the type of thing that would make your grandma go, eh? You are? 27, one of the uh, most fun uh, pop rock releases of the year coming from Japan, Polka Dot Stingray with the album that I don't know how to say because it's written in Japanese but you should check it out because it is just so damn catchy and sugary and fun. May Prati at 26 with the lovely, lovely, lovely ambient release here just so um, environmental, using sounds, very calm and natural sounds to make this album incredibly engaging and lovely. At 25 we got Holiday Sidewinder with Forever or Whatever, just an incredibly catchy and uh, accessible pop release here. Some of my favourite pop songs of the year, so tongue in cheek with tracks like Holiday Inn. Yeah, it's just everything I want from pop music and I just want to hear more from Holiday because I think she's a uh, uh, she could be something really big. 24, the surprising 180 that I did on JPEG Mafia. All my heroes are cornballs, just some of the most interesting and captivating um, hip hop music I think in 2019. No one produces like Peggy. Um, and there's just no one out there that's doing what he's doing and I think he could be a sign of more things to come. I think more producers could take from his style because it is just so unique and I like it a lot. At 23, Quelle Chris with Guns, one of the uh, biggest growers I've had in 2019 for absolute damn sure. I think the production is really good on here. I think his rapping is incredibly clever at times, just his attack on American culture with guns. And there's so much more to it as well. There's so much more to this album than just talking about guns. But um, yeah, Quelle Chris, man, one of the best rappers around right now. One of the more unique art pop releases in 2019 at 22 here with High Performer by the band 5KHD. Just a really cool take on like the 
the the overly worked worker i guess in the modern day um just a really cool concept that's backed by some great music just check it out i think it's a really unique listen william doyle at 21 with your wilderness revisited an album that is just very pro environment a tree hugging album if you will <laughs> and um, william doyle's just take on baroque pop is beautiful i think these tracks are just arranged so damn so damn lovely just the whole thing i reviewed it quite recently actually as well so if you want to hear more thoughts on that do check out the review top 20 now top 20 with weather day <coughs> come in is the album from weather day the breakout release that just seems to go pretty viral quite quickly for good reason as well it's a very lo-fi but i think the low budget aesthetic adds to the album completely. Lyrically, it's incredibly unique and telling. I just think Weather Day's approach to this style of indie rock and lo-fi indie is unique. And I'm just excited to see Weather Day, where, where Weather Day goes from here. It didn't get much of a positive or warm reception this one, but I think Little Brother's latest album is a really strong return to form. It's um, everything you've come to expect from Little Brother and um, they've been doing this for so long that they're just so damn good at it so I can't really say no to it. There's some really funny skits on here. I think the beats and the way they're rapping over the beats is really smooth and soulful. Uh, yeah, I, I just think Little Brother are killing it once again. 18, one of the boldest, boldest rock albums I've heard in, in 2019. One of the most fucking wildest rock albums in 2019. Rifrakia Electrique. This album, man, you ain't heard anything like this. You should lay your ears on this and fucking listen to it because it is some goddamn good shit. At 17, another album that didn't really get that much of a warm reception. I think it's fucking great. I think Chemical Brothers are proving that even in the 2010s, they should be a name that you should be checking out because they are just so good at this. And this is one of their best albums. This is actually one of their best albums, I think. No Geography has so many great tracks on here. It's a great dance, pop, electronic album. At 16, the lovely Big Thief with two hands. So many great tracks on here. Uh, I think Adrian's vocals are just so warm and uh, wisdom full. Wisdom, they're just full of wisdom, whatever the fuck that word is. Yeah, I think Big Thief are showing that they are an absolute great band in the 2010s and I didn't notice it at first but it took some time and I'm so glad I realized in the end that they are pretty damn great. At number 15 my boy Anderson Pack. he got my song of the year and he is here in the top 20 as well with Ventura. Just Anderson Pack doing what he does best. I think it's just proving that you know Oxnard wasn't quite up to scratch with his usual stuff but when he gets it right on here he gets it right. His style is so nailed down now that I think he just knows exactly how to sell a really strong R&B and soulful track. At 14, Daniel Pioro with Dust. This is one of the best classical albums I've heard throughout the course of the year. It didn't get as much attention as it should have. I think you should be definitely checking this out. I think Daniel Pioro's style is so damn good and fresh i just don't really have that much negative to say about it at number 13 an album that took way too long to uh, click with me even though i liked it at first but once i saw their performance for the mercury prize awards i was sold and it is black midi with schlagenheim jesus christ this album is so fucking daring i think they are just bringing something to rock music that is much needed in 2019. Sure, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you're unique or you're offering something different, you're amazing. But in, in the sense of what Black Mini is doing, I think it is so bloody good. At number 12, we've got Wiki with Oofy. Definitely the best Wiki album so far, including his Rat King work as well. Another hip hop album that I don't really feel got that much of a positive reception. But I think Oofy here um, shows that he is just progressing the beats he's rapping over are so damn bloody good the features on here as well yoel drew kills his feature and as does denzel curry um yeah man i think so many fucking great hip-hop tracks inspired by the new york scene at the moment like pesto it's filled with bangers i don't know why this didn't get the love that it deserved at number 11 another bold as fuck 
debut rock album from a band called Avenade with a terrifying, terrifying album cover over here. Wow, this is just so fucking loud. It is, it is fucking loud. With some post-hardcore and garage punk elements thrown in, with some guttural screams randomly every throughout, every so often throughout the album, it is just one for the rock fans and metal fans. Yeah, you gotta listen to this. And now we are in the top 10, the top fucking 10, with Kenny Siegel and Hemlock Ernst. I know a lot of people love the Billy Woods, Kenny Siegel collaboration in 2019. Didn't really quite love it myself personally, not the biggest Billy Woods fan these days. But Hemlock Ernst, I think is a really, really strong wrap around right now. I think, unfortunately, this album just came a bit too late, I think, because in 2015, he demonstrated that he had a really strong uh, presence as a, as a rapper on the Milo album, but it's four years later and we've only just got an album. Worth the wait, absolutely, but I just think it killed the momentum a little bit for him and um, it deserves much more attention than it's got. Kenny Siegel, of course, on production is fantastic. Uh, Hemlock's rhyming and rapping is really, really introspective and you get an insight into his childhood and personal life. It is a really, really good rap release in 2019. Hachi with Keepsake at number nine, one of the most sugary and cloudy and cuddly releases of the year. I uh, love Hachi's voice. I think it is just so bloody, bloody beautiful. And I think these tracks are so well made. I think the choruses are very catchy. Everything about it is just a huge sugar rush. And um, yeah, no, no, no doubt in my mind that this is one of the best pop albums of 2019. On the opposite end, we got one of the best rock albums of 2019 with Bent Knee. You know what they mean. Bent Knee, man are so theatrical and over the top that I just cannot say no to it. Like, I just think this band is so friggin' good. The vocalist, uh, Courtney, I think her name is, is just a powerhouse of a singer, an absolute powerhouse of a singer. Her voice is just, I, I, it's just so fucking fantastic. And these instrumentals that she's singing over are bloody great. And somehow this isn't even their best album. I think Shiny Eyed Babies is their best album but it wouldn't, uh, I would be doing a disservice if I didn't call this one a great one because it is almost as good. And uh, yeah, fuck man, what a great rock band they are. And number seven, one of the craziest sampled albums I've heard in 2019 with SCJ Escapism. Uh, wow, 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 wow. The talent this man has to fucking put these songs together. They are so busy and uh, throttling that you just cannot, you cannot not get up and friggin' dance to this. The Bloody Animal Collective sample on here is genius. The Nirvana one is just so fun as well. Like, what the fuck? I don't know how anyone has the ability to just make something like this. Like, it is just so friggin' good. I don't think it's on streaming services though, so you will have to access this through Bandcamp. But believe me when I say, you want to be checking this out. This is uh, my number seven spot for a very good reason. Just, just, just ever so slightly missing out on my top five is uh, an album I raved about upon release, and that is LaBelle with Orchestra Universe. This is another genre of music named Maloya that I discovered through 2019, similarly to the Mandy music I was saying way back earlier in this video. And um, it is just such an interesting blend of ideas with this modern classical approach as well. I think this artist LaBelle is incredible. This is all performed in a live setting as well. It is just an album that I think will floor you if you listen to this. There are no, 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 no modern classical albums I have come across that sound remotely like this. This is such a special listen. Kicking off the top five is Wise Blood with Titanic Rising, one of the most sweeping and extravagant and grandiose albums I have heard in 2019. The lushness of this entire thing is beyond uh, brilliance. I think Wise Blood as a performer, I think, is gorgeous. I think her voice perfectly captures the essence of what the music is trying to translate to you here. And the lyrical concept I think is really interesting as well. Wiseblood Man killed it with this one. I think this is one of the best Baroque pop releases I may have ever heard actually. 
and uh, especially in this decade, she is uh, just swept me, swept me from under my feet, if that's even a thing to say. Is that a thing? Uh, at number four, an album filled with tragedy, despair, and devastation, but most importantly, an album that is filled with hope. And that is Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Ghostine. An album attempting to deal with the aftermath of a loss of a child um, in a tragic accident, a freak accident. And Nick Cave's poetry is like no other. It is just like no other. The way he writes his songs just completely tear me apart. <laughs> they really do. And the final track on here as well, goodness gracious. I think the music is, is very patience testing and I think that was one thing that put a few people off for this album. But I think it, it captures exactly what he's trying to go for with the lyrics. I think everything about this album is near flawless. Nick Cave is, is doing it again. Nick Cave is, is just something special. I am sorry to Tyler the Creator, but I think the album that takes the cake for Neo Soul album of the year is Seba Capstad with Thena. Immaculately produced, amazing performances from the band all around, a fantastic singer here as well. Seba Capstad are just really, really nailing Neo Soul. They have got it down to a T. Songs about loss, songs about freedom, songs about Africa as a whole. They just have um, so much to offer, so much to offer on their debut album. This, this list is filled with debut albums, man. Like, uh, Jesus Christ, how? How are these artists so bloody talented at such an early stage? I do not know. And now we are at number two. Number two. <laughs> this is the point where you may be able to work out whatever my number one is because I picked my number two, vice versa. Blah, 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 blah. An album that unfortunately seemed to just come and go a little bit. But I think this hip-hop group are just bringing so much to the table. I think Parker Corey is an amazing producer. I think Richie with a T is a fantastic rapper. Grogs is a fantastic rapper. They are just offering so much with their production style. Everything about what they do, I think, is just something special. And it is, of course, Injury Reserve with their self-titled album. There are no artists in rap right now doing songs like Jailbreak the Tesla, or Jawbreaker, especially Jawbreaker. I think the tongue-in-cheekness of Richie's lyrics at times is so funny. I think his comedic approach um, to, to his rapping style has been funny from the start, and he is just uh, one of my favorite rappers at the moment. Every guest feature kills it on here. Amine has one of the best rap verses of the year, as does Freddie Gibbs. Like, I just can't possibly think of what they're doing wrong. I think they just have such a great sound. And I think they're gonna keep progressing their sound from here on out and just attempting to push more boundaries. And I'm excited to see what they do. And it's not even because they're pushing boundaries that they're at the number two spot. That's not really what music is about. They're just making it sound so good. Three Man Weave is hardly that original of a song, but it's a great hip hop song. Karuna and Lime as well. It's just, a phenomenal rap release. I have so little negative to say about Injury Reserve at this point. And again, like I say, it seemed to it seemed to come and go this album, which is a shame. Maybe in a few years people look back on it and think actually it's better than we remember. I don't know. Or I'll just be here on my own repping Injury Reserve and saying that they're one of the best hip hop artists around right now. <laughs> Hopefully people will eventually agree. And if not, I'll still be on my own repping this group. And here we are the moment we have been waiting for. Number one, my album of the year is I Know You Like It by Shinichiro Yakota. Yes, this is this is the one, this is the one. I just find this album addictive. It is so intoxicating for me. The fucking rhythms, the grooves, just put a smile on my damn face. I just like to boogie every goddamn time this comes on. Shinichiro is a frigging master. At this dance thing man like these songs span the course of many years and even though some of them do sound quite 90s influenced they also sound modern as hell too repetition in music and especially dance music can very often be taken a little bit too far just a little tad too far and Shinichiro knows when to stop he knows when to start he knows exactly how to nail a dance song and that is exactly why this is number one for me because there are no 
artists like electronic artists out there that can make a song as catchy and as friggin groovy as hell as I know you like it night drive 2.0 timeless uh, Tokyo this is like a dance album for the ages for me man I don't think I'll ever get bored of this and it's just been uh, an easy go-to album throughout the year ever since I discovered it anyway so hopefully me putting it at number one gives it some kind of boost some kind of recognition that it truly deserves because I think this is a special album and that is it that is it that is my 50 best albums of the year Shinikiro Yukota takes the crown it's been a good year for music I hope you've enjoyed my content and my reviews and my uh, year and this season here let me know your album of the year in the comments please let me know let me know your thoughts on my list if you think it's shit I'd love to hear you tell me it's shit and tell me what's not here that should be here because I know you will be mad that your favorite album isn't here and I can't wait for you to tell me that as well thank you for watching please listen to these albums if you haven't already have a good day Merry Christmas too and uh, goodbye bye